Right here on the Temple Mount's eastern flank stands the gate known by many names. The Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate, the Mercy Gate, but most intriguingly, the Eighth Gate. Have you heard about this one? It's the gate shrouded in prophecy, said to remain sealed until the moment the King of Glory makes his grand entrance. Imagine this, he descends upon the Mount of Olives, touches down, and as his feet hit the ground, the earth itself quakes and splits, unleashing rivers from beneath and heralding the appearance of a divine throne. Jerusalem, this timeless city, is a tapestry of history, stories, and profound significance for countless souls. Nestled within the ancient walls of the old city, the Eastern Gate gazes out towards the Mount of Olives, serving as a passageway to the Sacred Temple Mount. This gate has served as a beacon for adherents of the three main world religions since Roman forces destroyed it following the collapse of the temple in 70 AD, drawing tourists every year who come to see its magnificence and the legends it holds. The Gate of Mercy, as it's affectionately known, stands as the sole gate from the east, granting access into the old city's heart. Sealed for centuries, it embodies the prophecy Ezekiel received from the Lord, foretelling a time when it would remain closed until the second coming of Jesus. Imagine, for a moment, the layers of prayers, hopes, and mysteries this ancient gate has witnessed, standing as a silent guardian of faith and anticipation. Eight significant gates, each whispering tales of millennia, punctuate the walls that fortify Jerusalem's ancient embrace. Herod's Gate is the first gate we come across as we move counterclockwise from the north through the Damascus Gate, the New Gate, Jaffa Gate, Zion Gate, the Dung Gate, Eastern Gate, and finally, the Lion's Gate. Among these, the Eastern Gate, also known as the Gate of Mercy, stands out, its passage sealed, facing the Mount of Olives, and veiled in mystery and anticipation. This gate, the oldest in the old city, hails from the 6th or 7th century AD, a silent sentinel offering the most direct route to the sacred temple mount. Imagine, if only for a moment, stepping through its arches, you'd find yourself mere steps from where the Jewish temple once proudly stood. Amazing, right? The Gospel of Matthew recounts how Jesus, in a profound moment of fulfillment, approached Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, choosing a path where the eastern or golden gate now stands. Jewish lore holds that through this gate, the Messiah will make a triumphant entry atop a white donkey, signaling the dawn of a new era. In the shadow of the temple's memory, faithful Jews gather at the wall, hearts and prayers intertwined, yearning for the day the wall, the temple, and the eastern gate will rise anew. Nearby, within the dome of the rock, lies the rock, believed to be the very spot where Abraham was poised to sacrifice Isaac, a stone's throw from the gate on the Temple Mount's western side. This hallowed gate, then, is not just a passage of stone and history, but a gateway to faith, prophecy, and the eternal hope of people spanning ages. In 1541, a decisive act by Ottoman Sultan Suleiman left the Eastern Gate, also known as the Golden Gate, sealed, disconnecting the closest path to the sacred grounds of the Jewish Temple. This act of sealing the gate did more than just alter the physical landscape. It symbolized a profound spiritual longing. Jews drawn to the site closest to where their temple once stood, gathered to pray. Their hearts tethered to this most holy place, now just beyond reach. This gate's facade, unchanged since the 16th century, hides behind its sealed double entrance, a path leading to two vaulted halls, echoing with the silent prayers of centuries. In his writings, the prophet Ezekiel vividly recounts visions of divine glory departing the temple through this eastward gate, only to see it return in a majestic procession from the Mount of Olives. Ezekiel's narrative takes a dramatic turn as he describes the gate being shut by divine decree, a symbol of divine presence and a marker of sacred history. This gate is to remain shut, he was told. It must not be opened, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. And yet, a promise lingers. A prince, offering sacrifices to the Lord, will have the gate opened for him, a singular exception to the divine edict. This prince, after offering his sacrifices, will exit through the same gate, which will then be sealed once more. This perspective, rich with symbolism, speaks to a deep-seated belief in the Messiah's arrival through this very gate. The act of sealing by the Ottomans was not just an architectural decision. It was interwoven with the tapestry of faith a direct challenge to the prophetic promise that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem through the Eastern Gate. Amidst the stones and seals, prophecy and history converge, holding within them the eternal hope of return and redemption. The closure of the Eastern Gate is steeped in centuries-old beliefs and prophecies. According to Jewish tradition, this very gate holds the key to the Messiah's coming. 
The story goes that upon learning about this prophecy, the Arabs, in a bid to thwart the prophecy's fulfillment, sealed the gate with stone. Yet, for Christians, this gate already has a messianic significance. It is believed that Jesus, recognized as the Messiah, made his entry into Jerusalem through this gate, riding on a white donkey, thereby fulfilling Ezekiel's prophecy and marking a pivotal moment that would lead to his crucifixion. This event is not only a cornerstone of faith, but also draws millions of Christian pilgrims annually, making it a site of deep historical and spiritual resonance. The Eastern Gate stands as a testament to the intertwined narratives of hope, prophecy, and divine intervention. The desire to be buried on the Mount of Olives facing the sealed gate reflects a profound belief in being part of the Messiah's eventual entry and the ushering in of a new era. This gate, therefore, is not just an architectural feature, it's a symbol of anticipation and faith, playing a pivotal role in the divine narrative of redemption that spans across different religions and epochs. The sealing of the gate, as seen by believers, aligns with the prophetic visions, where the entry of the divine into the temple marked a moment of sacred significance, warranting the gate's closure. This act of sealing, both historical and spiritual, underscores a shared anticipation for a future moment of divine revelation and redemption, marking the Eastern Gate as a focal point of religious history and eschatological expectation. The Eastern Gate, envisioned as the portal for the Prince of Peace's return, paints a vivid picture of prophecy and anticipation. As we delve deeper into the lore of Jerusalem's gates, we uncover the historical Shushan Gate predating the current Mercy Gate. After Solomon's temple fell, it was during Nehemiah's time that the exiled Judeans made their return, embarking on the restoration of their sacred temple. The Shushan Gate, uniquely positioned and meticulously guarded, played a crucial role in the spiritual and communal lives of the returning Judeans. This gate, adorned with an image of the Persian palace of Shushan, stood as a testament to Persian support in the Judeans' endeavors to rebuild their temple and city. Archaeological discoveries in 1969 unveiled an archway believed by many scholars to be the remnants of the Shushan Gate, hidden beneath the current Gate of Mercy. This gate, lower than its counterparts and aligned with the temple's sanctum, served as a visual conduit for the high priest during the pivotal Yom Kippur rituals, linking the temple sanctuary with the Mount of Olives. The Shushan Gate's significance extends beyond its architectural and historical importance. It symbolizes a bridge between divine promise and earthly devotion. As the gate through which the scapegoat was sent into the wilderness, it was integral to the Day of Atonement's ceremonies, embodying the nation of Israel's hopes for reconciliation and divine mercy. Through these gates, the tapestry of Jerusalem's spiritual narrative is woven, connecting past prophecies with future expectations and reminding us of the city's enduring role in the unfolding story of faith and redemption. The solemn traditions of Yom Kippur during the Second Temple era, we uncover a ritual deeply rooted in the quest for atonement and purification. The Mishnah, an ancient Jewish text, illuminates this sacred practice, revealing the purchase of two goats at the East Gate for a ceremony of profound spiritual significance. One goat, designated for sacrifice, was offered to cleanse the most sacred spaces of the temple from the impurities and transgressions of the Israelites. The other, known as the scapegoat, bore the collective sins of the nation upon its head, symbolically carrying away their wrongdoings into the wilderness. This act of transferring the people's sins onto the scapegoat, which was then led through the East Gate towards the desolation beyond, served as a vivid representation of divine forgiveness and mercy. The scapegoat's journey, carefully avoiding any contact with the dead to maintain ritual purity, culminated in its release over a cliff, a poignant emblem of sin's removal from the community. In the Christian narrative, this ancient rite gains a new dimension with the entry of Jesus through the same East Gate. Believers see in Jesus the fulfillment of the scapegoat symbolism, heralding a new covenant that offers atonement for humanity's sins. His arrival in Jerusalem, humble yet triumphant, on Palm Sunday, mirrors the selection of Passover lambs, intertwining the threads of Jewish tradition with Christian faith. This moment, captured in the joyous proclamation from Zechariah, encapsulates the convergence of hope, prophecy, and divine love as the Lamb of God embarks on a journey to forever alter the spiritual landscape, bridging the old with the new in a testament to God's redemptive plan. In the fervor of Palm Sunday, a profound declaration was made, albeit unbeknownst to the crowd. 
Their cries of Hosanna and the waving of palm branches heralded Jesus as their chosen Messiah, the ultimate scapegoat and Lamb of God poised to absolve the world of its sins. This act of acclamation, resonating with the hope for salvation, was a prelude to the fulfillment of a pivotal prophecy. Merely four days later, Jesus would embody the essence of Isaiah 53's prophecy, bearing humanity's sins upon the cross, an act of divine orchestration for the atonement of sin. This narrative intertwines with the prophetic visions of Ezekiel, who was shown an eastern gate of a temple yet to be constructed, a gate marked by divine passage and henceforth sealed. Ezekiel's vision, as detailed in chapters 40 to 48, presents a gate reserved for the Lord's use, signifying an exclusive pathway for the prince, believed by some to be Yeshua, to commune with the Lord upon his return. This intertwining of prophecy and present reality stirs a profound sense of anticipation among the faithful, who see the sealed eastern gate as a harbinger of messianic times. Ezekiel's prophecy extends further, painting a vivid picture of God's glory returning from the east, a spectacle of divine majesty that illuminates the land. This vision, echoing through the ages, holds a promise of redemption and the establishment of an everlasting kingdom where the Messiah reigns supreme, heralded by the reopening of the Eastern Gate. As believers look to these ancient texts, they find hope in the enduring faithfulness of God's promises, awaiting the day when prophecy and reality converge in the glorious return of the Prince of Peace. The struggle over the Mercy Gate, also known as the Eastern Gate, has intensified in recent years marking a significant chapter in the complex narrative of Jerusalem's sacred sites. In 2003, Israeli authorities sealed the gate, citing concerns over unauthorized excavations and their misuse by groups affiliated with Hamas, a recognized terrorist organization. The move aimed to safeguard the integrity of this historical and religiously significant site. However, tensions escalated on February 14, 2019, when the Jordanian Muslim Waqf, which has administered the Temple Mount since the aftermath of the Six-Day War in 1967, defiantly opened the area for Muslim prayers. Despite Israel's efforts to reseal the gate, persistent breaches by Palestinians have been reported. The unfolding situation suggests that Israel might eventually concede to some form of Muslim activity at the site. The Waqf's determination to assert control over the Mercy Gate raises profound questions about the underlying motivations. Is this a harbinger of the eschatological expectations shared across religions, hinting at the imminent arrival of the Messiah? Both Islam and Christianity harbor beliefs about the end times that include pivotal events occurring at this gate. For Muslims, it's said to be the passage through which the righteous will enter on Judgment Day, echoing Christian prophecies of the Messiah's return. Additionally, some people believe that Muslim authorities' ongoing efforts to maintain control over the site are an attempt to thwart Jewish eschatological narratives particularly those that involve the Messiah entering through the Eastern Gate with the prophet Elijah. However, some people believe that in the face of divine intervention, such efforts are futile. Yeshua, Jesus, who overcame death and made appearances in locked rooms, reflects a faith in the supernatural triumphing over the material, a theme that resonates in the religious traditions vying for a place in Jerusalem's sacred landscape. Under the current gate of mercy, hidden secrets of the past await discovery. Could this be where Yeshua made his humble entry on a donkey, echoing Zechariah's prophecy and marking a pivotal moment in the Passover? This very gate might witness his return, symbolizing a divine plan of redemption that encompasses us all, bridging history with hope. In Islamic tradition, the two doors of this gate are individually named, the southern door as the door of mercy and the northern door as the door of repentance, highlighting a path to divine forgiveness and renewal. Nearby, the Dome of the Rock stands majestically, not as a mosque for communal prayer, but as a shrine. Its significance runs deep, housing the rock believed to be Muhammad's ascension point to heaven, a site of profound spiritual importance for Muslims worldwide. This area, rich in history and spirituality, draws pilgrims and scholars alike, each seeking to connect with the sacred. The ongoing excavations beneath these ancient stones promise to unveil more of Jerusalem's layered history potentially unlocking further understanding of the Temple Mount's mysteries. The exploration beneath the Eastern Gate and the Temple Mount has unveiled remarkable findings. Among them, the enigmatic Solomon Stables. Despite their name, these arched structures, constructed from reused Herodian stones, are a testament to the complex layering of history that defines this sacred site. The prohibition by Herod against altering the Eastern Gate or the cloisters along the Eastern Wall suggests the significance of maintaining the integrity of these ancient boundaries. Originally thought to have been built during King Solomon's era, 
these so-called stables have undergone re-evaluation by modern archaeologists. Now the consensus leans towards a construction date during the 9th or 8th century BC, placing them squarely within the Israelite kingdom's timeline. This shift in understanding moves us away from attributing them to Solomon, despite the enduring name. The stable's architectural beauty captivates visitors and scholars alike, raising intriguing questions about their true origins and purpose. With ongoing excavations, the hope is that more light will be shed on their historical context. Currently, they stand as one of the many enigmas wrapped around the eastern wall, with a gatehouse and stairway hinting at the layers of history still to be uncovered on the Temple Mount's upper levels. Nestled within the Temple Mount's gatehouse, visitors discover remnants of ancient civilizations, including two stunning Roman columns, signifying the site's layered history dating back over 4,000 years. This gatehouse, rooted in the Byzantine period, appears to have risen from the ashes of a second temple gate, further intertwining the complex tapestry of Jerusalem's past. Adjacent to this historical mosaic lies a Muslim cemetery, strategically placed on the wall's western flank. This site embodies a unique intersection of faiths and beliefs. Jewish tradition holds that a formidable military leader, sent by God, will liberate the city from foreign rule, entering through the eastern gate. In contrast, the cemetery's placement by Muslims aimed to thwart such a prophecy under the assumption that no holy figure would cross through burial grounds. Yet Jewish conviction remains unshaken, steadfast in the belief that the Messiah's return through the Eastern Gate will not be hindered. Jerusalem's walls feature a total of eight gates, each with its own story and significance. The Damascus Gate, on the northwestern stretch, serves as a primary entry into the city, historically leading towards Nablus and onwards to Damascus, Syria. The Lion's Gate graces the northeastern boundary, while the Herod Gate marks the northern perimeter. The latter opens up to the Via Dolorosa, a path of profound spiritual resonance for many Christians. It retraces the steps Jesus is believed to have taken towards his crucifixion, making it a pivotal pilgrimage route within the holy city of Jerusalem. Visitors who venture to Jerusalem's western wall's southernmost point will come across the Dung Gate, an Ottoman-era building that now serves as the main entrance to the revered western wall also known as the Wailing Wall. This site, steeped in devotion, welcomes a mosaic of pilgrims from across the globe, becoming a focal point for Jewish visitors in particular, though it warmly opens its historic embrace to followers of all faiths. Swinging towards the southwest, the Zion Gate stands as a gateway into the Jewish quarter, marking a path into the heart of Jerusalem's storied past. Meanwhile, the Jaffa Gate anchors the western front of the Old City, acting as a thoroughfare connecting the western and eastern halves of Jerusalem and facilitating a seamless passage between the diverse cultural and religious tapestries that the city weaves. The new gate punctuates the western wall, a relatively recent addition designed to afford unobstructed access to the Christian quarter for the monastic communities residing just beyond the city's ancient ramparts. These gates, each with its own narrative and allure, usher visitors into the myriad sacred sites and vibrant bazaars that lie within Jerusalem's venerable walls. While the Eastern Gate commands a special reverence among the followers of the three major monotheistic religions, the entirety of Jerusalem's gates, each distinct in its historical and religious significance, offers a unique lens through which to view the holy city. The Golden Gate, in particular, holds profound spiritual resonance. It is celebrated as the meeting point of Mary's parents following the Annunciation and as the passageway through which Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, imbuing it with messianic significance and making it a pivotal symbol for believers. Today, the Eastern Gate is regarded by many in the Arab community as a treasured landmark, further illustrating the complex tapestry of faith and history that characterizes Jerusalem, a city where every stone and gate tells a story of faith, struggle, and coexistence. As we reach the conclusion of our exploration of the Eastern Gate, also known as the Golden Gate or the Gate of Mercy, it's crucial to reflect on the profound symbolism and anticipation that surround this ancient gateway. Sealed and blocked for centuries, the Eastern Gate stands as a silent witness to the passage of time, religious transformations, and the fervent hopes of countless believers. According to Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions, this gate holds a pivotal role in the events of the end times. For many, it is not just a structure of stone and mortar, but a portal to future fulfillment and divine intervention. The anticipation of the Messiah's arrival and his triumphant entry through the Eastern Gate into the Temple Mount encapsulates a shared longing for redemption and divine justice. This gate, currently sealed, symbolizes the waiting and preparation for a pivotal moment in religious eschatology. 
The belief that the Messiah will one day land on the Mount of Olives, accompanied by all his saints, and then proceed through the Eastern Gate is a powerful image that transcends religious boundaries, uniting believers in a common hope for the future. It is evidence of how persistently people yearn for a world where righteousness, peace, and the presence of God reign.